Climatrix. Today we're going to have a look at the Gauteng Prelim for 2020. Please have a go at the exam before you actually watch these videos. If you need access to the paper and the data, you can find that in the description below. Question 7. Several documents were created to announce the postponement of the 2020 Olympic Games. 7.1. Use the 7 text, 7 logo part 1 and 7 logo part 2 documents and follow the instructions below to create the following logo. 7.1.1. Use the images 7 logo part 1, 7 logo part 2 and the text in the 7 text document and create a new logo in any application of your choice. Save the logo as 7logo.png. Alright, so we need to use the text that we've got over here. Alright, so this text. And I'm just going to insert the two logos already. Seven logo part one and seven logo part two. There you go. So I need to create a logo that looks like that. And I need to then save this logo at, as seven logo.png. Now I can do all of this in Word, that's going to be the easiest. And I'll show you how to save it then. So to move these pictures around, I need to change the wrapping to tight. Well, no, tight's not going to work. I think it's going to work better to make a top and bottom. There you go. Or put an enters, it doesn't really matter. And let's do the same over there. Come, there you go. And move that. There you go. Okay. And let's see if that looks okay. I think there was maybe a bit more space. Let's see if we can add in yeah, a little bit of space between that. All right. That looks about right to me. And it's also center aligned. Okay. So now that I've got that, I need to save this entire thing as a PNG. So the only way to do that is to actually use your snipping tool. So I'm going to go to my start menu and I can search SINM, SINP and you can use either the snipping tool if you're using Windows 7 or snip and sketch or the snipping tool if you're using Windows 10. So I'll show the snipping tool because that's the one that most people will have access to. So if I use the snipping tool, I then make sure that the mode is on rectangular and then it, oh, it automatically enabled new snip and then I can just click and drag and have this whole area snipped. So you'll see it actually snipped the cursor as well. If I wanted to be specific about that, I could have just pressed enter a few times and did that again. New and snip. Okay, there you go. And now I need to save it. So then I can go to save and I will go, you'll see the default is anyway a PNG. Nice. Okay. And data. And then I'll save that as seven logo. And now I've got my PNG saved. I'll just save the seven text file anyway as well. Now 7.1.2. I need to insert the new image in the 7 announce web page. So let's open up that one. Okay. And it actually shows me where 7.1.2. So I actually need to insert it here where it says center. Okay. I can't do it somewhere else. So to insert an image, it actually said what I could do if I didn't get it right. Hey, it says if you were not able to create the logo 7 PNG image, insert the 7 logo part 1 PNG image. So even if you couldn't do 7.1, you could still do 7.1.2. So now I can just go and put in an image, IMG tag. Okay. And my source, SRC. No, SCR. No, SRC equals. There you go. There it goes red. And how did I tell you to go and find the data? Let's see. I've got my 
file extensions, file name extensions enabled. And then I can just go and copy this logo.png and I can go and paste it over there and save. So it's in the right place so that it will be center aligned so that it will actually look as like it does in the picture. And let's see what the final product then looks like. There you go. Okay. I know it still says announcement at the top, which is a bit odd. So you could have taken that out if you wanted, but there were no marks subtracted for that. Just do exactly as the paper says. 7.2. Open the seven type spreadsheet. Okay. There's nothing there. Nothing's wrong. It's actually supposed to be empty. 7.2.1. Work in the chart worksheet. Create a chart or graph similar to the one shown below. So it says similar. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Okay. So now I need to create this. I've got a pie chart and I've got some data. Athletes, summer, winter, and some numbers. Let's see what we can do here. So if I've got, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to type in summer and winter. You always have to have labels and the numbers. Okay. Now summer is the bigger one, one double two six five three, because that's the blue one. And winter is the orange one, two four seven eight six. Make sure that you actually type that in correctly. And let's see, I can select that and I'm going to go to insert. I'll just go to recommended charts and I choose a pie chart. Okay. Getting close. Chart title, I need to change to athletes, athletes, press enter, and I need to move the labels to the left. Now you can't just drag it to the left. You actually need to move it to the left with the chart elements. So data labels will move it. No, sorry, not that le legend. We need to move to the left. Okay. And we, I can actually also see data labels. So I'm going to add in data labels. And as you can see, the winter is actually pulled out a little bit. So that you do manually, you can actually just click on that one. And oh, let's see again. I have to double click on that one. Click it again. Okay, not that far. And that's about it. There you go. 7.2.2. Work in the type worksheet. The start date for the Olympic Games is provided in column B. Insert a function or formula in cell C2 to determine if the current date is the starting date of any of the Olympic Games, if it's after the date, before the date. Display today if the current date is the start of any of the Olympic Games. Past if the current date is after the date of any of the Olympic Games will start and future if the current date is before any of the Olympic Games will start. Okay. Type. Okay, so I'm using column B. I think column A was literally just put there to distract you. I'm very sorry to say that you shouldn't have been distracted because they told you you should use the start date and they said we should take today's date into consideration. Okay. So first question is, how do we get today's date in a function so that it's actually dynamic? Okay. Because they keep talking about the current date. So you can't just type in the actual date. You actually have to type in a function that it will automatically use the current date, the current date. Do you see? So let's see. The function for today's date is today. Okay, it's not now. Now actually includes the time and this will impact this function. You can't use now in this instance. So let's see. This is going to be quite a long if. I'll show you more than one method. So we're going to say, is this date equal to this date? Now you could have said that date or you could have typed, and if you used this method of actually putting the function in first, basically using building blocks, then you would have had to use absolute cell referencing to fix that value so that you can copy it down. But 
let's say you didn't do that and you wanted to use a function, then you could say today. Okay, so I can use today in there. Is today, is the, is the date in B2 equal to today's date? If that is the case, then give me the answer today. If not, value false, give me a second if. Test whether that day is less than today's date. In that case, display past. See, I'm in value if true. If not, value if false, display future. No, no, no. Yes, you can actually do that. If not, display future, because the only other option is future. There you go. Past, future, and let's put in today's date. Today. There you go. It actually worked out. Um, you could, in this specific instance, have put in a third if to test for future and given like a error for like no date or not applicable or it's not a date or something as a as a last value of false. But I, it's always better to put in if you have three tests to put in two ifs. If you have four tests to put in three ifs, because the last value of false is actually like a catch all condition so that if none of the other tests apply, it will give that answer. So that's the best way to do it. And that's actually the correct way to do it. Now, the next part is only for people using Office 2019. In my classroom, we use Office 2019. So I'm going to show you how to do an FS because I saw a lot of learners actually figured out how to do that by yourself. In this instance, you could use an FS. Now, you cannot use an FS with multiple trues where you have to, to where you have to test for multiple conditions. You can use an FS where you're not testing for multiple true conditions. You're just giving alternatives like we did here. So we say, is the start date equal to um, today? Sorry, today, the function. If the value is true, then it needs to return today. Logical test two. So what the if s function does is it just moves on to immediately go to a next logical test. You don't actually have to type in if again. So logical test two is then, is this, if this is less than today's date, then it needs to be past. Do you see I'm in the value if true two, comma, but I have to do a logical test three because there isn't actually a value if false in if s. So b is b2 greater than today, then it needs to be future. Okay. And it'll give me the same answer. So that's how you could have done this one as well with an fs. All right, everyone, good luck in preparing for your finals. I hope it goes well. Good luck.